you know, I was thinking the other day, the more I travel and the more that I chat with fellow motorcyclists, the more I realise that there seems to be a common thread amongst most of us. Not that we're all crazy though, that's a very real possibility. Not that we're all having a midlife crisis, <laughs> though if I'm going to have one, I hope it includes a motorcycle. It's that many of us simply want to control our own life, not to be dictated to on how to live it. We value our freedom and the freedom to make that choice. You see, motorcycle riding isn't necessarily more comfortable than riding in a car. It's certainly not safer. It's not even remotely practical. And between bugs in your teeth and getting washed head to toe in a rainstorm, it can be totally annoying but you'll be hard pressed to find a motorcyclist who's willing to give up his or her ride for a suburban SUV. And today, as I ponder this fact, I'm visiting the historic Echuca Moama region. As you can see, it's not unlike most towns. But this place is a little different. It straddles two states, Echuca in Victoria, Moama in New South Wales. And for the most part, it functions as one. So much so that we refer to the place as Echuca Moama. The two sides have become one. To me, the place is one big compromise, a truce, a settling of practicalities. That's very SUV sounding, isn't it? Practical, boring, and that's where I come to the part about us crazy motorcycle riders. We don't want practical and boring, we want fun. We want a statement piece. We want to spend time doing what we believe in. We want the freedom to just be without fitting in, without compromise. Right on the line between the relatively mundane border towns exists a subculture, a culture of enthusiasts living in yesteryear, a culture where deep-rooted passions come alive, a culture where steam rules. Like this old girl I'm riding on now, it was used to haul cargo up and down the Murray River during the 1800s and this old steam engine was brought into service in 1888. It's had various lives in various boats. It's even spent 20 years underwater when an earlier boat sunk and it's still going. Well, thanks to those who live for this stuff. Now, I'm not for a moment suggesting that we motorcyclists come from an age of steam. I'm not that old. But I am suggesting that we are a passionate subculture. Just as the average bicycle riding, latte sipping hippie can't relate to the massive, insanely heavy, 10 horsepower hulk of a steam engine, to its passionate band of enthusiasts, it's priceless. It's everything. As for us motorcyclists, we probably don't have need 
for a huge steam engine and a seven and a three quarter inch bore, a 12 inch stroke and 90 RPM. We like things <laughs> a little bit faster, but boy, can we relate to the passion. We can relate to those who maintain it because they stand for something when the world is pushing another way. See this bridge? It links New South Wales and Victoria. For the day in which it was made, it was quite an engineering masterpiece. But to those in the know, it symbolises the pig-headedness and single-mindedness of the world we've become familiar with. You see, this bridge was never formally opened. Both sides could never agree upon who should open it and how it should be opened. So, it was built and chained up closed. Eventually the locals were so dang fed up that they took matters into their own hands and opened it for themselves. And this takes me back to this rather peculiar town. It's openly embraced the steam, the paddle steamers, the steam powered tools of yesteryear. They've put that fanatical little subculture into the limelight, providing a tourist attraction of a harbour side. The fanatical subculture is normalised, embraced, accepted. Which leaves me pondering, do I, as a freedom-loving motorcyclist, a bit of a rebel, if you will, want to be embraced by everyday society? Or is the fact that we shun the norm, that we embrace the opposite of conformity, exactly what makes us who we are? <laughs>